Okay, uh, this is going to be episode two of our Clip Champ, Clip Champ series, but I'm showing you right away what is the tool you're going to use. You're going to use PowerPoint. And then when you start the recording, instead of starting inside of the guts, which is this is the guts where you can see the slides on the left and you'd have a slide in front of you, uh, you'd instead, uh, before you begin your clip champ, you would be in this mode. Let me just show you. You go f uh, uh, start the slideshow, top left, see these two buttons from the beginning or from the current slide. I always pick from the current slide because I'm looking at the slide. So that's what I want to start with. So we're going to click that. And so this is how I begin. And then you start talking. So that's as easy as it gets. <laughs> and uh, now, why do you, why should you have a slide program? Because if what we're doing is we're trying to educate people about something, you have to have slides to present text and, and just opening up a book or a PDF and putting that on screen doesn't work these days. You have to have the fonts at, at a re readable size, if that's what you're going to be doing and showing people books or texts. Uh, now there's lots of other ways of presenting evidence, which is by graphics or, or pictures. Uh, so if it were uh, Sol Invictus, you might use pictures of Sol Invictus or coins and things like that, but not everything can be that way. So, uh, I, you know, you need to use text. And, uh, okay, so let me just show you something. I want to I want to explain I'm going to go out to another uh uh place and I'll come right back I'll be in another place and I want to show you the power of PowerPoint and and in presenting something thoroughly and quickly. Now I'm actually going to show you from within the ClipChamp program what I'm going to do next. So now I'm going to open up uh a episode in PowerPoint that I want to play from that first Thing. So you don't see the guts. You would just see the the central uh, slide first. So you're gonna you you have to hit slot screen recording, and it's well actually we're already in sc screen recording mode. So now we have chosen to look at all of this. Okay. So now what normally happens is up here. See where my cursor is. There's an option that will pop up. So if you hit the this record button down here on the left side bottom, you see that it's usually red before you press it. Then it turns purple when it's active. And then you go up here and you're going to select what you want to open and you get to open. Uh, you'll see all of your mm, screens, all of your open programs, programs, and you can pick that one you want. And you pick the PowerPoint that is already up in memory and is open to the first slide without the guts showing on the side. So and when you do that, you're going to see something like. A OK, now this is the starting landing uh, page of a PowerPoint I did, and it's probably like 30 slides here. And um, this was on, uh, on Constantine's devotion to the sun. So you see how quickly it hit, it catches your attention and it's big and easy to see. And you can even put little URLs down there. So if people are interested, you don't even have to say anything. People can see the URL and they'll know they can do that. So I just want to show you how powerful this is when you use animation, which is very super easy. So w watch this. I'm going to I'm going to try to introduce the or, the writer of this piece, right? So I can go backwards by the way. With your mouse, you have a if you get a mouse that has a a roller on the top of it, your finger can just move it along and I can say, you know, this is Martin Walroff and he's from the Ludwig Maximilian University. He's an evangelical theologian and a uh, faculty member and so on. And, and you can make comments on whatever you see on the screen. So this is all happening simultaneously, right? So now I have other layers of this. So I have a layer where he's written manuscripts. And so to show people, how, what has he done? He's written five books. He has 18 papers. He's an evangelical scholar of merit. So whatever he says is in this article, it should be taken seriously. So we're going to move now to the next slide, excuse me, and uh, or move to the next fields. And so this is how it shows up when you search in Google, you'll see these references to him. So I'm, I'm basically trying to show the audience right away. This is a very credible man. He has presence on the internet. He's a professor. Uh, now, how much more can I prove? Because he, to me, he has like some of the most key evidence that destroys all of all of the Roman Catholic myth completely this whole lie that you know the, the the eastern orthodox think that constantine is a 
is a uh, a saint, <laughs> and yet he's got this proof from the coins, from physical objects you can't change. The coin actually says Constantine says he's God, God, Constantine. I mean, come on, Divinus uh, Constantinius. I mean, it's just Constant Constantinius. So it's just unbelievable. Anyway, so here's where, oops, I think something's on screen. So uh, now I had this saved up. So I screen captured or grabbed this text. I'm going to have to go through another episode, how to grab things like this. So here's a, a another reference. He's at an Institute of Church History. And here's the faculty, faculty of Protestant theology. So I was trying to make sure that all uh, anyone w watching this would know he's a, a Protestant. He's not a Catholic. And he, uh, you know, he has all the incidences of credibility that we can take in credibility. Here's his contact information in Munich, his phone number, his email. So again, totally legitimate type, type of guy. Here are his books on Amazon, $168, not cheap though. And uh, he's got multiple books in different genres of, of education and specialization. So this guy knows his stuff. He studies, he's written on uh, Weltzeit. I don't know German, but I know that sounds like it's the world uh, view on something. So, and then, and then I switch back to the main stuff. So you basically can present to the people watching like, okay, there's no doubt that this is a serious writer, uh, professor. So if he's going to tell you what he sees in these coins and other factors, and later we have another episode on the mausoleum uh, of, of Constantine. And he says that mausoleum was set up to make Constantine Christ with the 12 apostles around him. This is a profound statement, ladies and gentlemen. He, Constantine isn't a Christian. He's somebody who's, trying, who's tried to trick us into worshiping Jesus as God first. And then what, he, what does he do? He had it all planned out. Eusebius says, he didn't tell me until the very end. And then I found out this is what his plan was. Constantine, Eusebius, who's a super psychophant, means super fan of Constantine, seems, you know, have, having some of the first misgivings in anything he ever said about the guy once he died, which is he never told me this is what he was going to be doing. And he so it, I never gave me any clue that it would be he would be at the center of the 12, uh, 12, 12 uh, boxes or monuments to the apostles. I, I it's sarcophaguses, I think they're called. And so that's so now you see how you can build up credibility of the person you're you're trying to present so you can show their their writing skills writing background they're real professional and so on in ma in a matter of seconds and it's visual meaning that the people can see it for themselves and they can recreate it you show them it's it's just it's just google just google this stuff and so it's on screen long enough that they can go google anything you are saying so the the credibility factor goes way up because it's not just you talking with nothing on the screen Okay, so I'm gonna so, so now I just want to show you how to do animations in PowerPoint, so you could do the same thing. I don't do them very often. I I just picked this one particular because this guy had so much credentials. I thought, let me just put on one slide and uh, and then and then that would do it. Okay, so I'm gonna sh just show you how. To okay, so what I'm gonna do is just show you that if you've already cropped some uh, pictures, so let's say I've cropped in this slide number two, I showed. Well, let me pick another one. Okay, here's slide three. So we just uh, had these multiple slides. I think there's four or five here. I'm just going to take a couple out and just show you how this works. And then we're going to move uh, the slide over to this slide four to just show you the, the I mean, these cropped pages. So here's crop page number one. You right click and to type copy if you ever want to move uh, these type of objects to another slide. So that's what I'm going to do. And then you hit control V and you moved it. Okay. So now, how do I animate this? So if I wanted to, just want to show you something. If I hit current slide right now, see that? So it's still, it automatically animated because it's already got an animation because it was animated in the other uh, uh, PowerPoint. And when I moved it, it still has this animation signal inside of it. So what I got to do to make this prove, show you how this works is I have to remove the animation now. So give me a second, and we're going to go back out. So you hit escape to exit what you're doing. And so when you're in 
uh, PowerPoint, you see at the top, there's File, Home, Insert, Draw, Design, Transitions, Animation, Slideshow. Right now we're in slideshow mode, so you can see the so whole slideshow, the, the draft uh, slides on the left and a slide in the front. But if we go to Animations, we now see animations, these green things here. And really, I only use, uh, you can use Fade, Fly In, Float, and that's all I use. You just use those three. The others I don't like. <laughs> okay. And um, now the animation can be, it can last for, uh, what does it say? 0.5 seconds, I guess. Um, or, oh, it starts in five seconds or it has no delay. Oh, this, okay. So you have to know that a PowerPoint was always designed to work on an automatic button. You just, you just put it on a kiosk somewhere, you walk away and it'll automatically uh, do the playing of the uh, story that you're trying to tell through the slide, but you don't, you're not even there. People just sit there and watch it. It just goes around and it'll time the slides, you know, exactly what you set it for. So some of this is not uh, necessary. But uh, now I got to show you. See this? So I now want to remove the animation so I can put one on, and you get to see how to put one on. So see, it has the number one over here. So that means it's already got an animation on it. So I got to remove that animation. How do I do that? I kind of remember. I don't remember how exactly to do that. Um, do I just hit? Yeah. Okay. So you just hit backspace. You just highlight it and hit backspace. So now I want to add this as an animation. But first of all, before I do that, I want to show you what would happen if I just went to slideshow and hit play from current slide. Now what will look like? It's just stuck there, right? I can't move it because now it's inside. Oops, it's, it's just inside the slideshow. So animation uh, will make it fly in when I click a button. But now it's already stuck there on top of the screen and I can't move it while I'm doing this. So we're going to hit the escape button to get out of the, the once you hit uh, from uh, play the slideshow from current slide. It's now locked into the the presentation of, to the whole screen. To to disconnect it, you have to hit ESC top left of your keyboard in a PC. I I don't know how it works in Mac. I'm sure it works similarly. Okay, so how do we add animation to this? So we go to the animations on the top ribbon here, and let's say we just pick float in. All right and it actually animates you what you can see. And if you notice, the number one now has appeared. Now, what if I wanna do a second animation that will follow this animation? So let's go pick another one from that uh, selection earlier. So let's say I want this, uh, this one here. So I'm gonna right click, hit copy, and I'm gonna paste it over here. Yes, yes, I'm gonna do it here, okay. Now, I don't know if you noticed, but it already, pre-numbered, uh, remember I told you they all had animations on them because I set up an animation with them. So now it's one and two, which is fine, but I wanna show you again how to work this. So how do we get rid of the two again? It turned out you just highlight it and hit the backspace key. Back, oops, the whole thing went away. Oops, hold on, hold on. You gotta do this delicately, it sounds, seems like you gotta highlight it and then hit backspace. So I, if you're not careful, you can get rid of the whole Thing you just brought in but if that happens just hit control v which means paste again and it'll reappear so now i want to animate this slide so instead of float in uh, let's try fly in okay yeah boom it's going to fly in so now let's go back to slideshow let's hit from current slide and now what will it look like okay so see there's the main screen and now I want to, I'll move my cursor, I'll, I'll rotate the uh, wheel, and this will show up. I can hold it as long as I want. I don't have it on a timer. I took it off all, all of the, that kind of control. Can talk as, as long as I need to, and then when I'm ready, I just quietly just <laughs> change it to the next slide. And there it is. So now both slides show up, and you can actually just cursor it back backwards, and it goes away. So that can happen. And so that's, you know, very easy to do. Um, so anyway, let's get now down to. OK, so now let's uh, show you the two types of content you're going to have. You're going to have either typed up text or you're going to have screen capture of text or pictures screen captured and brought into PowerPoint. And then from PowerPoint, you present your show. So um, here we go. See this? This is all typed up. So 
you you can put in text inside of PowerPoint. And the reason PowerPoint is absolutely essential and you can't just use a word processor is because it has all the right formatting to create slides and create a right impression, has the right dimensions of a 16.9 perspective, like of a TV screen. Do you see the TV screen perspective here? And so it's going to cut you off on the bottom. You can't go too far and it won't let you go too, too wide and won't let you go too high. So it's basically designed for presentation on a screen and that's built in. So you're protected from making mistakes that way. But if you had a a word processor, you'd have to know how to set up the fields so that that would be likewise similar. For $99 a year, you get PowerPoint. You get PowerPoint, you get Excel, you get Word, you get uh, any of the other main word Office products. And four other people in your family can share the same product throughout the year, your ch children in school and so on. So the, the, the uh, issue is, are you willing to go out of pocket $99 a year and you don't really need to pay anything for ClipChamp. But if you want to, I showed you it's $11.99 for some extra features that can be beneficial. So anyway, this is how you get text. So you got to type it up yourself or, or uh, uh, cut and paste from somewhere else on the internet constantly. You can just, I think this, was, yes, this is a Wikipedia article. So I just simply blocked and copied it just like I'm doing here and copied and pasted it here, boom. And lots of times this is better than this. So let's just look at the options. The other option is to use original text, but sometimes there's just so many unnecessary things that you can't get rid of. And they're just like wasting time for people to even have to see them. Uh, like, I mean, look at this. Uh, I, I, I actually am allowing the words Konstantinisch Wende, whatever that is. It's some German expression. He's a German professor. He likes to talk with German words. So, you know, if I had, time, I would have probably typed this up, but I was trying to do it quickly. So I allow certain things that are going to maybe not be of great interest to the reader. But you know what? I also think when you do a, a cut and paste of the actual original book, people know that there's no chance I typed it up wrong. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's it, This came from an article. So this is directly coming right from the article. So sometimes you want to make sure the, the audience knows it's authentic. There's no way you modified or did anything to screw it up. And that's why I like doing screen captures of pages of book. So you, these are your two things. But now, how are you going to do the screen captures? Well, apparently there is a way to do it within Windows, and but I don't know how to do it that way. And the alternative does cost money that I'm going to show you, and I get no money recommending any of this stuff. So I just, I just use it myself, and it's not expensive. So to me, it's like a, a great deal, and it's endlessly been it's, it's something I use all day long and I use it for lots of other things than just simply presenting a uh, video to, to people online. So what is that called? So it's from a company called TechSmith. So we're going to stop this and we're going to come right back and I'm going to show you. Okay. So see up here, I hope you can see this TechSmith, T-E-C-H-S-M-I-T-H, www.techsmith.com. They have multiple products. Snagit is the one I'm going to recommend. There's lots of other great things, I'm sure. And I've tried some of them and it gets, it gets too confusing for me and I like PowerPoint, but they basically create a whole ecosystem where you can do all the same things I'm doing with PowerPoint. They've done things like that and Audi8, Audi8 changes your voice if you want and uh, screencast maybe is of use, but I just use Snagit. So I would recommend this one right here. Just go for Snagit. We'll press the button there. Powerful screen capture for clear communication. Buy now, free download, so you can try it out, right? So they'll tell you over here how it works. And let's just take a look. If we clicked buy now, it's $62.99. Well, that seems like a, that's not what I paid for it. Uh, renews at $12.60 a year. So you pay $62 now and you pay $12.60 a year. Again, this is something I use. I mean, I use all day long for all kinds of things. And, and for example, would you want to record a portion of a YouTube video? You, getting YouTube video in, onto your computer is flawless with this device, with this program. And I'll show you that in a second, maybe. So, uh, so, so you just want to get a little bit of the video, the YouTube, or maybe the whole thing. That's up to you. Of course, you can't violate copyright or any of those things, but um, you can at least have it for purposes of, of keeping a, 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 a copy on your computer so you know what it said, you can quote it correctly, or if you do discrete uh, uh, crops from it, you can take you know a minute or so without exploiting an entire 
a, a video and or you know a few minutes as long as the video is like 30 minutes and you take five minutes to to address one point of that person that's probably fair use that's what we call fair use and it and comes still within the rules of uh, youtube so uh that's the uh the benefits of snag it with video but i'm just trying to show you as to grabbing and capturing uh, uh portions of a book or an article or something on screen that you want to then put in your powerpoint so i just want to then show you how i do that and using snag it but definitely snag it's the thing to do and uh, they do have upgrades uh, almost every year let me just check on the upgrades right now and uh, the new Snagit 22 that makes it easier than ever. And so if I wanted to get this upgrade, I have to pay $34.99. So, uh, you know, they're, they're, they're seeking money. But you know what? Sometimes you got to reward little companies. Microsoft can afford to give you ClipChamp for $11.99. Snagit's got to make some money. And you know what? I, I sometimes look at it like if I can keep that company in business with $34 more power to them. So they've got a lot of customers, hopefully, and that's going to keep them going. And they've been growing, growing. They've been around for over a decade. So I'm very confident they'll still be around. Okay. So anyway, let me show you how it works. Okay, I've never done this before, but I'm, re I'm recording the entire screen. So I think everything I'm doing is being recorded. So this is actual experiment because I've never been trying to teach how to use this program before. So that's the only option that will display everything I'm doing. So I'm going to give it a try. So the first thing I want to show you is, well, I guess the normal things are turned off. So normally you hit screen recording and then you would have an option to pick other limited screens. So it'll give you just go to your PowerPoint or just go to a web page or whatever. But now I'm doing the entire screen so I get to pick anything I want. So uh, it's, it's uh, the only way I'm going to be able to teach you is I have to do that. So let's go out here. And let's see what we see. So what I wanted to show you is how to use Snagit to copy an article that you like. And you don't want to just copy the text and copy the text. You want to copy the way it appears in the screen so that people can know you got it from someplace. It creates credibility that this is a true source. You're not just making it up. You didn't edit. You didn't manipulate anything, that kind of stuff. So this is from KCT. It's how to make a perfect chocolate chip cookie. And with uh, Snagit, you, you, we have this facility where if I go up here to the top, this little uh, uh, icon, it's very, you can't even see it normally. You can just see a small ribbon. I don't know if you can see this small ribbon right up there. But then you go there a little higher, and this shows up. And you don't really have to worry about this. But uh, once you learn how to, you have to set up a little bit, I think, initially. But the, the, the defaults are fine. And then when we hit the red button, watch what happens. It's going to come up with this uh, quadrangle or, or square, I guess you call it, but it changes shape depending on how you move it with your mouse. And then when you decide you want to uh, grab a screen sh capture of the portion you want, you have to put the angle, the left top left angle where you want the top left to go and then press the, the your key down, but don't let go and then pull it over. And when you're ready, then let go with your finger on your mouse. And then this shows up. Now, when that happens, you get an option. You can either take a picture of it, you can record a video from it. So if this were a power, if this were a YouTube video, you'd be, you'd hit the video and you'd record a video and it would record the sound of that YouTube. If you, you could, uh, you could capture a panoramic scrolling image. So you can move around on an image and it, that's panoramic and you would get it full in full anyway. So uh, there may be some settings you have to do, but I, I've just kept the one default all the time and it works fine. So I'm going to hit the uh, image of a camera. So I just want a picture. And then it's going to take me out to the YouTube, and uh, not YouTube, the Snagit editor. See, it's a Snagit editor up there. And uh, I can then go over using the, see this highlighter tool up here? Very common thing I might do. I might go, let's highlight the chocolate, words chocolate chip cookie so people see that right away. I might want to uh, point out that this is for the weekend with an arrow. So you see, I'd grab the arrow. I could do a text. I could say I want to add a little text, which is this is from uh, what channel? KCET uh, is source or whatever, maybe like that. 
and then um i think that's it for now that's all we need or you could put a border on it border on it so make it look more official oops let me try that again border you, have to, you, have to pick, you kind of have to pick it and oh you have to pick it and hit apply i don't do this very often okay but i like it, it looks good <laughs> Makes it look better. Oh, and wow, look at that. You have a way of making a corner show up. Uh, I don't, well, let me, oh, okay, you know, I'll do that. I'll apply it. So apparently, it's just for fun. Okay, it's not It's not what I would do in the end. Anyway, so, uh, oh, it didn't, it didn't stick with my text. Let's put in uh, KCET again here. Okay, so I'm just, I'm just playing around with it while I'm here with you. I don't do some of these things normally. So now, how do I get this into uh, a PowerPoint? Well, you have to know how to do some things, like your right button on your mouse will allow you to bring up a menu in PC world to copy. Then you do copy. And so that's a universal command within uh, Microsoft uh, World. And um, so here's we're back to a PowerPoint. I'm going to delete what's right there on the screen, and I'm just going to put in what we just got. Oops. Oh, one thing with with uh, Snagit, you have to know that when you left it, did you see how I only have it highlighted KCT? I forgot to make sure to t put my cursor in the center here and click. Now, but see, it's also actively has the uh, quadrangle. I don't know if you can see this and the letter A. Well, that means it's going to want to, if I click here, it's going to have text going in there. So what I really have to do is I have to kind of kind of click off the te text button. So maybe use something else, like uh, just press something else. And no, I know what you do. You take your cursor and you hit the, the open field. See all this open field area? You hit that open field area, and now it's free. It's, it's not limited to just that area highlighted, okay? Then right-click it and copy that, and now it'll copy not just what was uh, emphasized or highlighted. It'll copy the whole thing. There you go. Now, this is way too big, right? So now I'm going to make it smaller by moving it around. And uh, so I've left it. It's not how you would really use this with the, the curling thing thing there, but that's, you know, might be in certain cases worthwhile. So anyway, that gives you a clue how to work this thing. And um, and then there's more to it than that. Uh, let me just give you a quick uh, highlight of one more thing that you need to know is because if you're doing a lot of videos, you want to be able to retrieve something in common. Like if you're doing a Constantine series like I do, I want to have an image of Constantine. I can pull up a Constantine a Serpent's image, Constantine a Mausoleum image, whatever it might be. And so you can save the image here to a file on your computer and pull it up later. So here's all the, there's lots of screen captures I've done on a particular episode. I could pull them up uh, in a future episode if I would need to without having to do find it all over again. So you create kind of a little mini library specific to that particular topic. And since this is all about Bible verses and history, many times the Bible verses will come up over and over again. And so it will help you to have uh, save them to your computer and not leave them here. Now, they're, they are technically in your computer, but but the way... Uh, uh, TechSmith works with Snagit. They're kind of like, you see at the bottom here, you'll see about 15 of them, but they just roll off and, and eventually uh, go into this uh, vapor and you can't pull them up that easily. Uh, you, you can pull, pull the, any of these up that are in your last 15 or so, but anything before that you can't unless you have saved it to a folder and then want to retrieve it and then that works fine. It'll bring it back up here and you can work on it here. Okay, so I think that gives you enough of a detail of how to work this. And uh, I'll probably come back and say uh, goodbye. Okay, so I'm going to do a wrap-up where we'll review what I just reviewed or explained. <clears throat> we showed you uh, how to use ClipChamp with a slide program like PowerPoint. We learned how to use PowerPoint animations. That's where you can bring in what I'm doing right now. I'm just dropping in little segments slowly into the screen. And uh, PowerPoint costs $99 per year at Microsoft.com. Well worth the price. You get a lot more than just PowerPoint. You get it's uh, Excel, Word, and other programs that are useful for your, your... If it's not useful for you, your kids are using it in school. So that's useful. 
Uh, number two, you learned how to capture the entire computer screen in ClipChamp. So that's uh, uh, an option that you can f you'll get on the screen when you hit screen capture. It'll offer you entire, or you'll get the, the it'll show you a little <clears throat> picture of let's say the PowerPoint that's open in your computer or other uh, screens. And um, we showed you the, the free program works excellent. All the features I showed you today, completely available free. You don't need to do anything extra for it. Uh, it if you want to use their custom music, art, artwork, videos, all that, $11.99 gives you those free, and a free license for those things. And that's fantastic. And also you get with extra, with $11.99 a month, you also get storage of all your uh, files that are you you're recording so they'll all be taken up into the internet when it's all done and if you ever lost your computer you can always restore everything you had there uh, <clears throat> we also learned number three how to use TechSmith snagit program to do screen capture into jpegs and uh, i didn't show you yet how to take uh, to to do it to capture uh video from youtube and with audio you, that's a possibility or you can just you can basically capture just the audio if you're just trying to get the music track and so on so it's a, it's a multifaceted tool in that respect and we learned that uh snag it only costs 63 dollars which you know uh, it's different than uh than cliff champ just to say that it's it's something that only a small company would invest all the time and effort to make a perfect product for for you and it doesn't make them a target for takeover or anything. So it, they'll probably just always exist as they are because it's just like a small niche market for just certain people like people like us who, you know, if you're making YouTubes, you've got to have something to capture the screen. You've got books and you've got articles and videos and all kinds of things that you just constantly are ca capturing all the time. So you've got to have a way to do that. And TechSmith is flawless. I mean, I've, I've never had a problem with it. Uh, <clears throat> That isn't to say people haven't, so you might want to go look at the reviews, if there are any reviews someplace. Uh, anyway, great product, flawless, never a problem with it, uh, and uh, so I hope you'll like that. All right, I hope this episode helped everybody. God bless. Take care. Ciao. Bye.